everyone. Great to see you. And those of you on Zoom, I hope to see you during Joys and Concerns. And Facebook, how about if you comment that you're there so we know, we would love that. And of course you can send your Zoom and Facebook prayer requests through comments. Just know you can do that. You are a part of us as well as these fine looking people sitting here. <laughs> Are you in your masks for Halloween today? That's so good, great. I bought a pair of fake eyelashes, but I was afraid that I couldn't get them off again after I put them on to scare you. Yeah, and then you'd be sitting there, I'm doing the gospel and you're going, ah, look at it. Oh, well, okay. Um, let's see, Joe, do you wanna say your thing? Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that right after the youth moment today, we will be having the lighting of the All Saints candles. Now, for this, these are in memory of some loved ones who have gone before us. And we will be, light, like I said, right after the youth moment, we will have some nice gentle music. And please come up and light the candle in memory of someone. Oh, I do have one more. And you took my bullet. Well, that's what I need to move. I did walk away from your bullet. Sorry about that. There's your bullet. Thank you. Um, the other is because some people are on Zoom today. They can also let us know or let Max know or somebody up in the sound booth, and we will light a candle for them Ooh. in memory of that person because they're not here. So be happy to do that. If they would like to let us, yes, Anne. No. Oh, you want here? We'll, we'll give you a demonstration. You're going to like this. Okay, we're trying to not burn it. So, all right, I think we have the candle ready. <laughs> Playing with fire today. That is how. Well, tomorrow is actually All Saints Day, just so you know. So you know what that makes this. All Hallows Eve, which we've shortened to Halloween, of course, and turned into a crazy holiday, haven't we? As I understand it, how that got going was All Saints Day came first, and then a group of Celts decided that they should go chase the ghosts away the night before, I guess. <laughs> and that's kind of what Halloween started getting built on. Anyway, so All Saints Day is a moment in the Christian calendar to commemorate, we need to remember and honor, all saints, both known and unknown, who have gone before us in the faith. So it's not just something reserved for the Catholics who got it going, and then the Episcopalians who are known for it, but we get to do it too. And I think it's a good thing. In fact, in the book of Acts, saints is used in a broad way to mean all those who are following the way of Jesus. So, if someone has impacted you favorably, <laughs> which actually, you know what? God uses all things for good. So you will learn from someone if you don't learn from them, if you get what I mean. Um, contributed to your spiritual journey. Let them come to mind during the service. Don't even try to think of them. Just let them come to mind. And I've asked that you have paper and pen available. So as those come and you're worried you might forget, just jot their name and then go on participating. That, that was something I thought could work for you. So anyway, 
We need others to help us, don't we? Some pop in for a moment. Maybe they're ahead of us in line and they say something and it greatly edifies us or they are there for a lifetime or for a short time, whatever. So, yeah, okay, we are ready to go. Let's look at the verse. Look, God's home is now with the people. Pretty cool. And I'm going to do a little change here. When I read this passage from Revelation, I got so excited. I, I just thought it was the most fantastic thing. But this also is the day when the lectionary offers us a wonderful reading in the gospel as well. So I'm going to do that one right now because it sets everything else up. One of the teachers of the law was sitting and listening to Jesus answer questions. And when he was done with one, he came up and he said, sir, what do you think the most important commandment is? And Jesus said, hear, O Israel, the God is one. And we are to love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our strength, with all our minds. And the second is like unto it. We shall love our neighbors as ourselves. He said, you know, you are very right to say that God is one. And that we are to love him with our whole selves, including our understanding. Yes. It certainly is stronger than doing all these sacrifices and burnt offerings. And Jesus said, ah, you almost are in the kingdom. After that, no one dared to speak. His wife. <laughs> it's Halloween. Would you please join me in the call to worship, responsive call to worship? Come into the land of God. Live as the people of Christ. God for this wonderful gift. Oh God, you are out. You are our God, and we come as your people on earth. Gather us in. Bind us together in your love. You have written your law upon our hearts. May we be generous and loving friends. Strengthen us by your spirit that we may live in love a love that transforms our lives, even as you use our hands to transform the lives of others. Amen.
a disclaimer. You need to hear this. Neither Ginny nor I were supposed to be here today. If you look in your bulletins, you'll notice two other names on there. It doesn't say Ginny and Joe. So needless <laughs> to say, Ginny's more prepared than I am, but uh, nope. So it's a prayer of confession and assurance. Helper God, be the hope that overcomes our despair. Be the love that overcomes our hatred. Be the mercy that overcomes our sin. Set us free from the prisons of our own making. Forgive us. You, are, you welcome us home into the loving arms of your mercy. Amen. And now there's no youth in the church, but I bet there's youth in in Zoom land, do you have any people that might be on Zoom today? I'm just waiting to hear from Max to see if he sees anybody. No youth today. Oh, sad. They're probably getting ready to go trick-or-treating or they already went trick-or-treating and they're exhausted from the high sugar content. So that's, that's what I think. But to, so, we, we don't have to speak to the youth this morning, but I was gonna just talk about saints and the people in your life that were saints to you. Could have been a grandparent, a mother, a father. All these people are our saints. They passed on, but they're still in our hearts. And so today we set up our table for All Saints Sunday. And I want you to take a moment. We're gonna play some very nice music. In fact, maybe Jan Stanley, you'll hear her playing in the background. Um, we have a lot of her recorded music. So Max is going to play some really, no? Oh, did you talk to Max? Because he's got it up there too. Max. Sorry, sorry. I was just, that's a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're good. I think we've got the music figured out. So I want you to take a moment first. Think about those loving people in your life that really influenced who you are and how much you miss them. And I know that you do. So just use that time to think about them. And then when you're ready, please come forward and light a candle or more, one or more candles in honor of them.
was sweet, sweet. Yeah. Good to go. There are so many here with us, and there are just a few that haven't come in yet. So we're going to stand and sing when the saints go marching in, and they're going to come in now. Okay? And our music is for two verses. So I think we should sing the first one and the third one. Okay? Let's stand as they march in.
can't wait for the day we don't have to do this. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. Uh, this is, today's reading is Psalm 146, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those who help, whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm doing a pitch. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I apologize. I no, guess that wasn't clear. No, it wasn't clear. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a revelation. That's what's It is so good to be with you. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old earth and the old heaven, and indeed the sea had been removed and passed away because there was no need for a place for Satan anymore. And then I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, adorned as a bride and being sent down from God, adorned for the beloved. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling is here among human beings. Yes, she will dwell with us. They will be her people and he will be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No longer will there be any death or mourning or weeping or pain because the old order passed away. She who is seated on the throne said, write this down, for this is trustworthy and true. It is complete. I am the Alpha and the Omega. What used to be what is and what is to come, the beginning and the end. Amen.
Last night I lay asleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, I thought the voice of angels in heaven. Just my sermon. <laughs> yeah, my dad could sing. Put this away. At the entrance of the college at which I worked for 15 years and from which we were all, the counselors retired early for the budget, was this saying that I saw numerous times as I walked up the steps, carved in stone. The unexamined life is not worth living. Who wrote that? Socrates. So it's good to remember and good to give thanks and think who our forebears were and who influenced our lives. Naming and thanking God for them, for those who've contributed to who we are, especially our spiritual journeys. Why? Because remembering helps us to secure those connections with them, lest we forget. We feel more connected. They give us hope when we realize people are still cheering us on. For there is a great cloud of witnesses, it says in one verse. My dad gave the illustration one time, and I always remembered it, probably because he also gave me a, a real joy for sports that I resonated with. So he said, it's the Olympics, and it's the end of the marathon, and in comes the first runner, and the people get up and cheer, and then the rest all come in and do that victory lap until the end. That's what it's like. We are being watched and cheered on by those who've gone before. And not just those canonized saints who really were tested for their virtue, but in fact, John, 
Well, no, it wasn't John. In the book of Acts, so probably Luke wrote that, it is synonymous to say the holy ones and the saints. And you know what? Both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we are called to be holy. Wow. Of course, in Leviticus, then it goes on. Here's how you do it. You don't eat this and you don't eat that and you do this and you don't do that. Oh, my gosh. You know, 613 purity laws to follow. Good luck with that, right? Jesus came with the new covenant, said. <laughs> it's not about that. But it is about your actions. And the new thought movement has impressed upon us, as has psychology, how important our thoughts are. That as we think, so things will play out. Yeah. Wow. So we're asked to grow in holiness. In other words, we're asked to become what? Saints, right? So can you start seeing yourself that way? <laughs> and then the church, that's the new Jerusalem. The place of peace is what it means. The bride is referred to as the holy city. And who's the bridegroom? The lamb. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we're to use our communion with Christ and Jesus is the way to set ourselves apart. That's literally what holiness means. I was shocked when I first learned that. You mean it doesn't mean to be pure and sparkling, glorious, radiant, sin-free, blah, 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 blah. No. It means to be set apart. You could say nonconformist, holy. So it's not primarily moral, ethical correctness, but kind of an otherness. Holy Toledo, set apart. Huh. Not watching others for our cues or copying the famous who are famous just because they're famous. Great. It's tough because we're watchers, aren't we? <laughs> uh, I know a person that, that actually, when they get to cities, ride mass transit so they can better the people. <laughs> Watch the people. Isn't that fun? I'm going to try that. So it means that we have to allow ourselves to be transformed. But how? What laws do we follow? That's why I felt it was so important to do the gospel today. We follow the law of love. So when in question, that's the law, not these 613 things. And we're new creations. I have made all things new, said John in his vision in Revelation. And I've never touched on Revelation before, believe me. <laughs> Talk to Vern who's one of my current day saints. I saw him in North Dakota twice last week. It was awesome. So we'll get to see a picture of him. Did you happen to get to load those, Max? He, I think he will. So you're gonna get to see Vern. <laughs> Vern and Terry. He's such a merry man and his smile is so genuine. He's 92, he's gonna be 93 on December 12th. His birth date is, I believe, one year and 12 minus four. Is that eight? Eight days different than my father's. So he's kind of like my father, only really transformed. <laughs> Have you transformed? Can you think of ways that you may be transformed instead of conformed? Her light's not real good. Isn't that great how he just cracks up there? At first, I had a picture, you know, the selfies and we were a little far apart. And then I thought, well, I, I'll get closer to him. So I put my head on his, he says, yeah, that's how to do it. <laughs> He's just so sweet. Yeah, great. Thank you. Been wearing my new North Dakota baseball hat all day, you can see. How have you transformed? You know, that might be a new Steeple Views article. I could ask people if you would share with me an area that you believe, like compared with maybe when you were a kid or whatever, or recently, how you've transformed, how you've changed. Wouldn't that be edifying for all of us to hear some of that? 
And of course, one of my biggest problems with steeple views is figuring out what to write about. So <laughs> if you ever have suggestions, we'll soon have a feedback box and you could give me some ideas. Well, sometimes we're paralyzed on our spiritual paths, don't we? And we don't, we don't know what to do or how we can change or how we can conform. When we're with our buddies or people we're trying to impress, sometimes that all goes out the window, doesn't it? And who do we become? You know, maybe that's where, and I, oh, you know what? I forgot to use this in the gospel. This phrase is only in Mark, but I so relate. One of my favorite words starts with an S, ends in an H. Who, who's a crossworder or worder here? S-T. S-T-R. S-T-R-E. Yes. <laughs> Strength. Love God, not only with all your heart and with all your soul or your mind, but with all your strength. Maybe this is what it's for. So we don't conform. That came to me this morning. Well, what would Jesus say? How to do it again? It's just love. So when you're paralyzed and you're thinking and feeling and worrying that you're not enough and that you'll never be able to transform certain habits and because we get so aware of our failures, our weaknesses, our sins, well, just know, all we have to do is ask, right? Mm, maybe a few more things. Anyway, I felt this yesterday. I'm going to confess something. One of my failures is a quickness to anger, where sometimes my whole body instantly, boom, I'm a gut person, becomes angry. Oh my gosh, if any of you were around yesterday, you'd have heard it flying. Oh my gosh, my knee is bothering me, right? So I'm in the, in the at one particular point, well, several times, I was in the elevator and just a yelling away. I don't know if that's why it didn't go all the way to the bottom floor, but... <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe that's why, George. <laughs> anyway, if you were around, I need some forgiveness from you for the yelling and screaming that I did. Um, yeah, my self-indulgence, anger, and I let it fly. So look at the, what confession can do. Now you know that I got to work on it, right? <laughs> and isn't it interesting, I, I had this thought. Ha, huh, ha, huh. this, after seven days ago, while I'm in North Dakota, writing the steeple views at the farm. And what did I say in the steeple view? Well, I especially think of that verse that was at the bottom right-hand side, where James said, if you can control your tongue, you can control your whole personality. Well, there you go. You wondered about my personality. <laughs> there she goes. Yeah, okay. Dear Jesus, I said in, in my bed last night, this person came to me and I'm going, you know, maybe you've got to have a little more to say after you share that. And what came was, dear Jesus, what are we going to do about that part? I think first I have to be willing to give it up. And not glory in it and say, whoa, I feel such power when I get angry. You know, it's such a change from the weakness I feel. Maybe I could just breathe into my gut, learn how to breathe better to feel that strength, right? And get grounded and feel the, the energy going to my feet. That's what's coming now. And maybe I have to see it as a wounded part. So that's what I did last night. Because as I've mentioned, we have parts. We're not this congruent one personality which I kind of think Jesus mastered and got to. We're all these little different parts. And I have an anger part. And she's wounded. How else would she get that way, right? So I need to work with her, be with her, bring Jesus to her, sit on Jesus' lap and say, would you help with this part? <laughs> I need I needs help. So breathing. If I can remember, that's a, that's a body thing. If I can remember right away, right? I'm angry, now breathe, Terry. 
just for a moment, look way up or look way down. Do you have an indulgent part in which you're like the world and it needs transforming, conforming to truly be holy? Let's just practice. I mean, like to close your eyes and just breathe for a second and see whoever your saint is that might help you with this. Let them pop into your mind. And maybe an affirmation. What came to me this morning was, I am strong through you. As we go into quiet and prayer, let me share a very poignant poem. poem. To open the eyes of our hearts. And remember, this poem is about a saint who died. It's by John O'Donohue for a parent on the death of a child. You may wanna let yourself just sit comfortably in your seat and close your eyes. No one knows the wonder your child awoke in you. Your heart, a perfect cradle to hold its presence. Inside and outside became one as new waves of love kept surprising your soul. Now you sit bereft inside your nightmare, your eyes numbed by the sight of a grave no parent should ever see. You will wear this absence like a secret locket always wondering why such a new soul was taken home so soon. Let the silent tears flow. And when your eyes clear, perhaps you'll glimpse how your eternal child has been so much to you. God, you accept us even in our weaknesses, our failures, our sins and indulgences. Thank you, God. Let me just show you Vern's first book that just came out this year or last year. So great, a cloud of witnesses. So in it, he shares episodes of when saints taught him things. And I'll be sharing some. They're beautiful. Girls? So we welcome you Zoom people. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, great. <laughs> yes, thanks for waving, good. Now, if you have an announcement, this would be a good time to make it right ahead of time. And maybe you can share it more as a joy or a concern. In other words, you're, you're saying, what is your joy about it? Or what is your concern with it? Or your hope? Are there any announcements? First, George. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, share a little joy. For those of you uh, out there in the um, virtual world, you won't get the opportunity until you come to church to see the air purifiers that are located in the four corners of the sanctuary. 
Um, right. So the air purifiers, the good ones are running around $800 a piece and we have four of them. And thanks to a professor at the University of Michigan, he said, you know what, you can make it for about $20 a piece if you have a box fan. So we have four box fans with the filters on them, duct tape. So they're not as pretty as the $800 models, okay. but uh, they work just as well if you have the right filter. So praise the Lord. Praise $80 the Lord. instead of 800. Yes, and thank you, George. Yeah. I'd like to share a joy. Um, yesterday or Friday, uh, my sister Nancy, my youngest sister, I got married Yay. and wow. not for the first time she was in a very abusive relationship for perhaps 50 years and finally at the age of 68 she said this is it I had it and her husband happened to mention to her one too many times if you don't like it get out so a week later the moving van came up to the house and she was gone and five years later Nancy now is 73 and she met a wonderful gentleman who's 79 and they got married on Friday. So oh, praise awesome. the Lord. And praise the Lord. So, so happy for her. That's awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Well, I'm coming your way. Right here. Good morning. I have a joy in that on Friday night, I was out for dinner in town and unbeknownst to me until Saturday morning, my wallet within my purse that had all my credit cards, my driver's license, my vaccination information, my social security card, all my medical cards, everything was gone. And it was, it was found by someone at the restaurant and I got it back on Saturday. And I can't tell you how much I thanked God for that. <laughs> Will you find out if they copied everything? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A lot of good people. Lot of good people anyone, in the world. anyone else? Yeah. Anybody else? Pat. Oh, Pat. Sorry, Pat. I do have one. Sorry, it's a little loud. Whoops. Who's down? Pat. We have something from Zoom. Oh, okay. okay. And then we're going to do Pat. Uh, Norma would like to raise up uh, Bonnie's memorial service next week um i believe it's on i don't know what day it is Sunday, Sunday. at 11 30 after the service bonnie right. hines memorial service there's one on saturday as well and saturday we have yes. one for matt's friend ruth matt Matthews. matt's Matthews. Matthews. thank you friends 10 30 10 30 on saturday okay are we all set with Zoom? Oh, absolutely. Come. I, I'm going to do one right here. Is he all set up here? Okay. Frey is my daughter. She's in the hospital. And um, her name's Darlene. Darlene. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a trooper through everything. So we're praying she won't need surgery. We'll find out on Monday. Or if she does, that it goes well. Any others? Prayers for my sister-in-law, Karen, who is having gallbladder surgery on um, Friday. And just pray that it goes well. I fully expect it to, but please. Who is that here? My sister-in-law, Karen. Thank you. Uh, Pat Golden has asked for prayers. Who? Pat Golden. Is this Pat Golden oh, who is right. having an MRI done on Tuesday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. to find out? I think she has a lesion on her hip. And she'll know on Thursday whether or not the lesion is benign. So prayers for Patricia.
So as we just breathe together, feeling the unity of the bride of Christ. Truly beloved. We thank you, God, that we can have such a communion and relationship with you. That you live among us, not up on some throne somewhere. We thank you. That you care for us and about our weaknesses and ask us to love you strongly. We pray for those on our prayer list. Annie, as she adjusts to new medication, and Bob, as you heal his organs from the chemo and the radiation. For the family and friends of Bonnie Hines, who was taken from us so suddenly. Such an open and friendly, loving person. And Carol Jeffrey's niece, Chrissy, you continue to hold her in your life. Elizabeth Heinlein, thank you for her cheerful spirit. We pray that you may be with her in a special way at this time in her life's journey. And for her sister, Catherine, that she may be strong as she cares for her and Bob as he travels back and forth. We pray for Freddie and his continued miraculous recovery. For Lynn, as she continues to heal from surgery. For the family and friends of Ron, who has passed. For Ryan, recovering from surgery. For Cindy, Sue Lynn's daughter, recovering from cancer. And nine-year-old Brandon, Eli, his brother, Laura, his mother, precious in your sight as they deal with the grief of losing their husband and father. And are focused on Brandon's treatment and health. We thank you that Wendy is feeling good. Help her with these last treatments of chemo and we see her body completely free. For Darlene, of course we pray she will not need surgery. We see her as whole. And then we surrender to you, not our will, but yours. And that you'll be with her regardless. For Harriet's sister-in-law, Karen, we pray. For Pat Golden, may she feel peace and calm and courage as she waits. And may she be free and clear. We look toward Bonnie's memorial on Sunday and Ruth's memorial on Saturday. 
and pray for their friends and family, especially for Norma and for Matt. God, you see us all. You see us so well. You see all our parts. And you see us whole. Thanks to Jesus. And you want us to be whole and healed. Because you are all heart. All love. May we turn to you, cry out to you in our weakness and our, our lack of strength. We thank you for the glorious leaves and the mountains and the flatlands and the saints who are in our lives. And just now I'm going to give an opportunity for you to say their names, whisper them out loud people who've helped you grow. Thank you for these helpers along their way. And we may, may we still feel their presence. We pray all this in your name, as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother God, our Father.
Would you pray with me? As the people of God, we are called to be justice for the oppressed, food for the hungry, freedom for the imprisoned, and sight for the blind. Let us lift up those in need as we share gifts for the church's mission. Amen. <laughs> mm. We didn't go up in flames. <laughs> Would you join me in the benediction? Stan. Oh, I thought you meant. Yeah. Raise your hand because you're blessing the saints. God, thank you that we are saints. Can you say that? I am a saint. I am a saint. We, are we are saints. Help us to be holy. Help us to be holy. Transformed. Transformed. Amen. Amen. Yay. <laughs>